What's up everybody, it's Parker with BI Elite. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to calculate a simple moving average. Moving averages are helpful to smooth data in order to identify trends over a time period. If you're coming from the world of investing, you're probably very familiar with moving averages that will help you smooth out the daily fluctuations in stock price data. That said, I add moving averages to a lot of my reports with data spanning different industries. I'm making this video now because we're currently running a contest over on training.bielite.com. This contest is specifically covering the GameStop stock price data and the correlation with the Wall Street Bets subreddit. So if you are interested in connecting to some stock price data, maybe adding a simple moving average, make sure you check out the contest. The link is down in the description. As you can see, we have a few lines on this line chart. In gray, we have the daily close price of GameStop stock. And in blue, we have the 12 day simple moving average. In orange, we have the 28 day simple moving average. In general terms, the simple moving average is going to average this close price over the previous number of days. For example, the 12 day simple moving average is going to average the close price over the current day and the previous 11 days giving you that 12 day average. This is going to create a much smoother curve as you can see in blue. It's a little bit smoother than the gray line. So daily fluctuations aren't taken into account near as much. And even more so with the 28 day moving average, it's much smoother. When you plot both of these, you're able to see a lot of crossover and crossover might indicate a potential movement in that stock price, for example. We're going to start by calculating both the 12 day and 28 day simple moving averages. And then we're going to end with a variable simple moving average. This is going to allow your user to select an SMA period and the SMA calculation is going to vary based on what they've selected. For example, if we want to see a very broad simple moving average, such as a 500 day simple moving average, we can expand out our date range and see the very slow movement of this GME stock price data. So over the course of eight years, we can see the 500 day simple moving average is very slow and does not react very quickly to the daily fluctuations in data. So let's go ahead and jump into a raw Power BI file. I have already connected to my GameStop stock history data set. If you want to connect to this data set yourself and you're watching this video sometime as it's released, make sure you check out the contest in the description below. Let's go ahead and start by plotting our closing price by our date column. Let's put it in a line chart. So right now we have all of the daily close prices. And as you can see, if you've been following the news, as of recently, GameStop has had some wild fluctuations with their stock price. So I'm going to filter that out so we can get a better idea of the normal stock price. And let's look at a subset of data. So now in order to create that simple moving average, let's just create a single measure. And I'm gonna call this SMA. And let's create that 12 day simple moving average. So I'm gonna call it SMA 12 day. All we need to do is type in a single function called average X. This is going to allow us to average multiple values. The first parameter actually needs to be a table. We're gonna pass in the dates between function. This is going to return a table of dates between a certain selection that we dictate. I know I have a date column called date, so that is the first parameter of this function. Next, we need the start date of our dates between function. We want to look at today's date and the previous 11 days to give us the 12 day window. So we can simply type in max of our date column minus 11. That's going to give us the start date of 11 days ago. And then our end date is simply max of our date column. Max is simply referring to the day that we are currently looking at in the visualization. So this measure is going to calculate for every individual date that we're looking at. So max is just referring to a single date within this visual. For example, when it's calculating for Thursday, June 2nd, 2016, max of my date is June 2nd, 2016. We could swap out max for min and it would be the exact same. So now that we've provided that date table, let's put a comma, and then we need to provide the expression that we want to average. And that's simply calculate sum of our close price. And let's close that off. And that is our entire calculation. So let's go ahead and throw in our SMA 12 day into our visual, not our slicer. And let's filter down a little bit so that we can see a little bit how this differs from the closing price. We do already see that it differs just a little bit. So all we have to do in order to port this over to a 28 day is to copy it and let's change it to 28 day. And instead of subtracting 11 days, we subtract 27. And let's throw that on. And there we go. Let's make it a little bit smaller. So now we can start to see some of that crossover between those moving averages. As you can see, it doesn't take too long in order to get a solution working. Let's go ahead and copy this page. Let's duplicate it. And let's create a what if parameter to allow the user to select the date range that they want for the SMA. We can do that by going to modeling and new parameter. 
I'm going to call this parameter SMA period. It's going to be a whole number from zero to let's say 500 increment by one and make sure you leave this add slicer to this page selection uh, checked and let's click OK. That's going to create this new slicer, which as of right now isn't going to do anything, but it's going to let the user make that selection. I'm going to shrink down our date slicer a little bit and move this over here. So now let's copy our code for either of these SMA functions or measures and let's actually create a new measure, paste that in and we can call this SMA variable day. Now all we have to do instead of subtracting 11, let's subtract the SMA period, SMA period value and one extra day because we want to subtract one day below their selection and there we go. Let's throw this into the visual and we have our selected SMA period calculation. Let's expand out our date range just a little bit and reduce our SMA period, let's say to 100. We can type in 100 to make it exact. And now we have our 100 day SMA. Pretty easy to do within Power BI. In the future, we're gonna learn how to calculate an exponential moving average, which is a little bit more difficult and will require a longer video. So with that, I hope you liked this video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, make sure you click the like button, and I'll see you in the next one.